Hi everyone. Uh, so you're with Husafrit of the Humanities today. Um, today I'm talking to Amal, um, uh, one of the uh, one of the most um, uh, beautiful people that I've met on social media that I wanted to talk to. Beautiful in the sense that we both of us share the spirit of you know um, uh, of many things. I think uh, probably being in the humanities. Um, both of us share a lot of things um, that, you know, that we uh, like to talk about. So Amal is a PhD student at the Manchester Metropolitan University, UK. Hi, Amal. Hi, <laughs> Hi. How are you, Amal? How are you these days? I'm good. Okay. I'm good, thank you. Okay. So how, I hope you're doing your, like, is this your second year, your PhD, third year, final No, my, my last year. Oh, I, finally. I, actually, I will, I, yeah, I will submit next month. Oh, okay. So that, <laughs> yeah, oh my God, that's, that must be a little stressful, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. But okay. you know what, these, these days I'm actually, I'm just doing everything, so I'm bored. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful. That is wonderful. I think, I think you just have like a couple of steps to go and then you'll be done with it. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. can't wait yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Amal, I met you on Twitter. I've seen you like your posts and how you engage with your studies. Um, and everything and I was so interested in like getting to know you and if possible um, to give to provide this space for you to share your story um, with our listeners and viewers um, so that they kind of like have a lot to take from you and learn from you um, so how like you, your, your PhD is in um, is in language English language um, we'll first talk about what kind of like motivated you to study uh, English language um, and you're, 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 you're especially focused on the Saudi, um, Saudi English, is it? It's a Saudi yeah. English, yeah. So what kind of like, what led you to sort of think about this, um, you know, this kind of an area? Um, uh, well, as as an English learner myself, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I started in college, uh, but because you know I I learned English since I was I was a kid in private school, but when I moved to college, it was like it it was a public college, so mm -hmm. I had uh, classmates from public school, mm -hmm. and I noticed that uh, only few of us uh, could actually. Uh, follow the grammar of English and mm -hmm. the pronunciation, uh, and I yeah that made me wonder why why are we uh, students who went to private school why are we different? Mm -hmm. Although in private schools uh, we had Arab English uh, teachers, okay. we didn't have uh, English teachers from Western countries. Mm -hmm. So what made us different? And then uh, I uh, I worked as a teacher in intermediate school. The same thing. I, I, it was. I found. I found it that it was difficult for uh, Saudis to learn, to, to speak, to be confident to use English. Absolutely. You know, yeah. they are always correcting themselves. Even myself, I, I tend to correct myself. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, uh, when I studied my uh, master's degree, I met a Sri Lankan uh, 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 a person. She was. Uh, we became friends, and she she introduced me to Sri Lankan English. Okay. Uh, yeah, her English was different from Australian. Yeah. It it was good. Mm -hmm. I could understand uh, could understand her. Mm -hmm. We could communicate. It was intelligible between us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we took a class about world Englishes, and that got me interested in world Englishes and studying right. English from mm -hmm. a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe maybe okay. Uh, all, all these years, uh, English has been studied in Saudi. As a West, as a standard, uh, as whether uh, Saudis are able to master standard English or not, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, I thought maybe I should uh, study it from a different perspective, perspective and see what I find. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, I I created this uh, this idea that I should study English in Saudi within the Saudi society, and see whether these what they call them uh, 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 language errors mm 
are yeah. actually not errors are actually mm-hmm. systematic and they ha- there are there are reasons that Saudis use this language uh, this they they make these errors or mm-hmm. language features mm-hmm. so i met my supervisor uh, <laughs> dr rob drummond he's a sociolinguist Right. And he he told me actually, Anna, your study is a sociolinguist. I remember I, I remember li- listening to him. He was arguing with his colleague. He, his colleague said that uh, I, I don't know what the idea that his colleague was trying to say, but I remember uh, Rob telling him no. It was uh, that her study is sociolinguistic, mm-hmm. and I, at that time I didn't know what what sociolinguistic yeah. mean. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, So yeah, it, it turns out that it, my study is variation of sociolinguistic, and that's how I I I I I did my study from a uh, variation of sociolinguistic perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're like about to submit your thesis, and I think you've you've got interested in you know Saudi English in like um, from multiple um, avenues. Um, how how do you think you could sort of um uh make any kind of like an influence outside you know like your uh, academic circle you know like yeah. so like we find that a lot of lot of like people like us um who have who don't have access to like kind of these kind of theories like you know this is not an error this is a feature um but they do not know that they just think that it's an error and they are they are not very confident to speak the language So what do you think uh like you know you we could do in order to sort of uh go out of our like an you know, academic bubble and sort of interact with people and let them know like that this kind of you know like to to work out a mechanism so that they find themselves comfortable in the variety that they speak like i think probably through writing public writing or like something like podcasting or whatever uh what what do you think do you do you kind of like have a plan or do you th- kind of like intend to do something well I, i'm just one person i can't do everything absolutely. myself you know absolutely yeah but but, but when when we i think uh, uh what uh, researchers publish influence education yeah. in saudi yeah. so if they continue to publish the uh, the idea that uh, we should teach in standard english uh, and that's how we should teach it and these are errors the uh, the, the education uh, uh, system in saudi won't change mm-hmm. so i think if i started and others uh, uh, so my re- my study my research and uh, were convinced and did the same thing maybe eventually we will we will change the education system in saudi Absolutely. Also, also not only the educa- we we shouldn't rely on the education system in our country. Mm-hmm. People can can listen to you, your podcast, uh, to other podcasts, can read in the, for example, uh, on Twitter. On Twitter, that's why I write in Twitter mm-hmm. uh, um, um, about these ideas. Uh, these uh, the, these outlets will educate people out of mm-hmm. schools and universities. This will lead will lead them. Um, to think yeah maybe uh, uh english is just for education for communication i don't have to master its standard grammar you know i'm mm-hmm. fine uh, communicating in my own english absolutely absolutely um I'll, we will also talk about your kind of like your academic journey so you you you've also told you've also um you know met friends who've influenced you in many ways to think about uh like the areas like social linguistics uh world englishers um being a phd student I, i think it's it's a lot of challenge like especially for um uh you know like um especially for us you and me um coming to uh you know um these uh first world countries um how do you how do you navigate uh the kind of uh uh the politics or the the kind of power structures that you know kind of like um sort of inhibits us you know in many ways um how let, let's just talk about how your journey was your academic journey was so far yeah i as an international student a student it's uh yeah it's it's difficult uh 
especially that I'm studying uh, uh, English and I'm against their own standards English, you know? Yeah. Uh, and while I'm, I'm myself, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, they, they could see me that, that I'm, I'm speaking a different kind of English. So I'm incompetent, maybe. I'm not good enough. So yeah, it's, it's difficult to be an international student and uh, arguing for another language other than the language they speak here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you're on Twitter, you're very vocal about um, the struggles that you have to go through while doing a PhD, like one mm -hmm. of the struggles being um, uh, the multiple sclerosis of MS that you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, would you like to, how would you like to sort of approach this? How would you like to talk to people, like share your story with them? Um, about you kind of navigating um, these kind of hurdles? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, I had a uh, uh, MS sentence for a long time. Uh, I think maybe before I started my PhD, but I, at that time I didn't know I had a problem. I, I felt like I had a problem, but I didn't, I thought maybe because, you know, I have a brain fog where my brain freezes and I can't think. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. so at, uh, at that time, I had that problem. I thought it, it was like a writer of loss. Yeah. Or maybe I'm stupid. That's, that's how I felt, you know. Uh, until 2018, um, when I had visible symptoms uh, that led, uh, led, me, led me to, to see a doctor. And by the way, I saw a doctor after three days because I thought maybe if I sleep, I sleep may, uh, for three days, maybe it will go away by itself, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like it came. It mm -hmm. appeared out of nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, uh, for a year, uh, I, I, I uh, that's what, what what I think what I did wrong is that I stopped communicating with my supervisor. I didn't tell them. Uh, uh, um, it was it was hard, you know. But I think you know, uh, coming out of the of the the problem, I think that communicating with your supervisor uh, and telling them and asking for help. I'm not good at asking for help. You know? Asking for help is, is very important. Whatever your issue is, you have to ask for help. You have you have to communicate to to tell people around you that you need what you need and what, and how they can help you. Yeah, and I think I'm. Um, I'm not. I don't have superpowers. Uh, I I am privileged that I have a supporting system. I have my family, and my supervisor, and I have access to good uh, health care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's what helped me. Uh, otherwise, I would have quit my PhD. Thank yeah. God I didn't do. Absolutely, you're a winner. You're an absolute winner. Um, like, I, I'm sure there are people. Uh, you know, probably me in, in future and we, we never know like, you know, things um, that are happening. Um, like one of the things we as students have to face is the burnout, right? Like academic burnout. So we have yeah. to, we are, we, are, we are constantly like, we are like hamsters in a wheel. So we have to constantly produce things, yeah. you know, read things, write things. So there's, this, this, is, this is like never ending. And um, how was the how was the support that you got from your peers, your colleagues, your your faculty, and your parents, your uh, family, uh, when you had to face you know um, things like this, especially academic academic burnout? Yeah, uh, as I told you that. Uh, uh, because I told I I made them aware that I have to have uh, rest days. Um, I, I wouldn't be able. Uh, and, and these, during these days, I won't be able to 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 do anything. So yeah. uh, of course, I'm going to miss deadlines. So yeah, I, I, I when I felt that I'm go I'm uh, I'm I'm tired. I need to rest. My brain is shutting down. I, I just yeah. I put myself first and absolutely yeah. I, Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to accomplish anything if I mm -hmm. didn't uh, take time, you know? Yeah. If, uh, if I didn't take time off to rest. 
That is so true. That is absolutely true. Um, so you are like almost completing, like you are in the process of editing your thesis and just a couple of stuff to go. Um, what do you think you, um, after completing your PhD, what do you think you want to sort of, uh, how do you want to continue in terms of, you know, contributing your scholarship to, to um, you know, the, the, your, the existing field or some other activity? How do you want to, like, how do you think you want to proceed? Well, I, I have big dreams. <laughs> oh, that's uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm. I'm thinking. Hopefully, I, I can get a job. Uh, I would like to teach uh, in social linguistics. Uh, to teach social linguistics. Uh, to continue research in this field. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to to do my the same study again, but to study other features. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I should. I should. I should. This is a complete work. I should continue. I should build on this work. To mm -hmm. make it complete, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, 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 hopefully, I'll continue doing what I'm doing now. Absolutely. Um, so talking about Saudi English, like backtracking again to to your study, um, can you give us like a little bit of history as to how, um, you know, um, English kind of became influential in the context of Saudi, and then. Um, like, I know, like, for the fact that in Sri Lanka, like, we were a colony and uh, the language mm. was imposed on us. And a lot of people say it was introduced, but no, but it was imposed on us. And we had to go through, like, uh, you know, huge barriers, you know, like facing, um, you know, like in terms of our accent, in terms, in terms of uh, pronunciation, in terms of using the words, like vocabulary, all that. Um, so the, but one of the one of the scholars working on this, you know, field uh, calls this extra linguistic values that are attached to the language because uh, it's all yeah. about it's all about your class, it's all about your, the culture that you exposed to. So um, could you give us like a brief context about you know like the influence of English? Um, uh, yeah. In Saudi, yeah, Saudi is a different context because it wasn't, uh, it, it isn't a colony. Uh, so, uh, but I, I still think English, as you said, it, it was imposed on us, uh, but through different means, through education, through uh, uh, globalization. Um, uh, because uh, when when English, uh, when schools in Saudi started teaching English, it was like a few hours in high school. And then gradually it became uh, more hours starting from uh, middle school, mm -hmm. and uh, and now through uh, from uh, uh, primary school. So it it is increasing. And why? Because uh, uh, we are in a globalized world. Uh, it is a modern language. It is the international language of communication. Uh, in Saudi, we are, it's easier to get a job if you speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing, it's, 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 some people um, um, uh, might consider it a prestigious language. So if you speak language, uh, English, then you are prestigious. Mm -hmm. uh, at my, uh, at my, my time when uh, I was in school, uh, a few, only a few people in my city went to, to a private school. So it was a privilege. We are, we were we were looked at as uh, people who are privileged who can speak in other language. You know, it's a sign that you have money. You you can go to private schools. Uh, you are educated. So it's it's all about perception. But yeah, English, how English uh, beca uh, became um, important in Saudi it wasn't through colony. It was through modernization, mm -hmm. and it is increasing. That's why we are uh, behind uh, when it comes to. Uh, Presenting English as uh, uh, as a variety of its own in Saudi because mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a new thing in Saudi, you know, mm -hmm. not like Sri Lanka, well established variety and Indian English, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember, like, um, when we were kind of like learning Sri Lankan English, there were also like varieties within Sri Lankan English, like standard and non-standard. So. Uh, people like used to say like for the non-standard variety they would say like it's a not pot kind of english like 
you know, it's, it's kind of like people don't know how to pronounce certain words. They can't pronounce fur. They can they they can't pronounce sh like the different sounds. And you know, people being people being you know um, discriminated because of this. And there's increasing tendency that, like you rightly said. Uh, if you speak good English, there's high uh, possibility that you secure a good um, profession. Like you, know, you, you have access to a lot of avenues. Um, you've, you've, you've taught at an intermediate level uh, in Saudi, and uh, I, I'm sure uh, you've seen how students go through uh, the kind of struggle that you know all of us go through when talking in English and using English. Uh, perhaps we we kind of have studied the language, but we don't have enough confidence to talk the language. We can't yeah. speak the language. Um, um, are there any any instances where you you kind of like you know you were intrigued by the politics of you know Saudi English at work? Are there any varieties inside the Saudi English itself? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, of course, uh, we don't we don't look uh, look at them like you do in Sri Lanka. It's a different context. Why? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Saudi English has uh, has never been presented or introduced yeah, to Saudis. Yeah. They don't know that they speak Saudi English. Yeah. So it's either standard good English, standard English, or uh, a learner language. You know, yeah. learner, mm -hmm. learner's language. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I corrected myself. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, um, yeah. But when I when I uh, they persisted in my study, uh, uh, when I interview, interviewed them and we talked about uh, their uh, English views and their perception about English, they all have the idea that they should they should speak standard English. They mm -hmm. don't care if it's British. American, Australian, Canadian, although these are very different varieties, but to them, it's these varieties uh, constitute one variety, which is standard English, which is good English. They don't know that they are different. Mm -hmm. They have the perception that what white people speak in Western countries is the good English, you know? Uh, but I think, yeah, if, uh, 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 there, will, there will be a, uh, a resistance to Saudi English if I, uh, if, uh, I uh, other researchers and I get to introduce it to Saudi. They, they will resist this variety. It's what Kachu, do you know Kachu? It's what Kachu uh, uh, call uh, linguistic uh, schizophrenia because mm -hmm. it, they use one variety, but uh, when, when, the, when you ask them, about which varieties is good, uh, they would say that standard variety is better, but mm -hmm. it's different than what they actually use in their daily life. Mm -hmm. Is there, have you encountered any like literature, like poetry or fiction, for example, like that, that you Saudi English, probably? No. No, uh, oh, okay. no, we don't, we, we, okay. we haven't reached that point. Yeah, I told you, we are behind you. We haven't reached that point where we right, use right, right. Uh, our standard in, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, in literature. Mm -hmm. Mm. I, okay. I examined uh, in my master's degree. I exam my master's degree. I examined uh, uh, how language is used in a newspaper in Saudi mm. by mm. Saudi writers, and it's yeah. I find that it, of course, it's standard English. Mm. Wow, it's super interesting. Um, we'll just change the track a bit, and I know that you are a humanities student, um, and uh, today, kind of like this is something that this for this podcast you know focuses on like you know about the about the kind of um, struggles that we have to go through as humanities students to present or to get our work across you know a lot of emphasis has been given on um, scientific work like you know natural sciences or mathematics or engineering management IT but what we have to say in terms of you know um, um, our, our, our critical um, ways of looking at the world are kind of being challenged um, at this point in time. Like as humanities student, how do you find yourself in this position? You know, like being a humanities student, doing a very important um, research on world English, uh, South English, like you, know, like you rightly said, you've not reached a point where it's being, you know, legitimately you know, it's 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 been you know um, uh, established kind of uh, through scholarship. 
how do you like what kind of challenges do you find as a humanities student right now well my brother studies uh, <laughs> a piece of time <laughs> and he always tells me that uh, my my field my major is not good enough you know it's not science although yeah. i was better than him in school uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's what you study, uh, they, uh, the world see, a lot of people see that science means that you are smart, but studying humanities means that you are still, you're not good enough. Um, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't change the world around me. Uh, I can't change my brother's uh, opinion, but I believe that uh, uh, how my brother studied uh, computer science in Australia, in another language, is because of people like me. We taught them, we taught him and other people English, how to, how to understand English and how to communicate, communicate in English. So English language, language studies and humanities uh, is, uh, is very important part of science. You can't do science without humanities. Wow, absolutely. That's, that's so interesting. And the kind of tension that, you know, we have with the sciences and the humanities today is Exactly, because we cannot meet at a point where we can have a conversation with each other in a way that it kind of like, you know, fosters, um, you know, um, good, good, um, you know, uh, exchanging of like, you know, research and our ideas. Um, and I think it's people like you and the, the projects that you do, and also the informal ways that we use you, uh, like in this case, to kind of like uh, uh, contradict these kind of ideas. Um, Amal, um, I would also like to ask you, like, you being a, you being a woman studying humanities, um, you know, um, in, in, a, in a first world country, um, what was your family's um, attitude towards you not moving into a, a science kind of stream area was it was it always um, you know has it always been the case that you wanted to study the humanities to be honest no and my family uh, uh, are the re not my family my yeah my family and my the society are the reason that I, I uh, got into humanities in the first place. I want to study medicine. <laughs> yeah, but the, I, I don't regret it. I'm, uh, I'm, I actually uh, I like what I'm doing. Uh, mm. But yeah, because I am a woman, I had very limited choices. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my choices is to be either science teacher or English teacher. So yeah, I chose English teacher <laughs> because I enjoy it. I enjoy, I enjoy learning languages. I, I enjoy mm -hmm. uh, teaching uh, other languages more than teaching science. That's why I how that's why I I studied um, English in the first place. Yeah, and I, now uh, in my study, I think I can, uh, because I think I know that women in Saudi have very limited, like for a long time uh, until recently, they had limited uh, 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 choices in life. Uh, 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 so I. I I made sure that to include women in my study uh, to okay. listen to their opinions. Yeah, when it comes to language, because you know, in so many studies that uh, carried out in Saudi, they only included men, but they expected that uh, whatever they found would be applicable to women as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they ignored yeah. they ignored women. Uh, so yeah, that, I made sure to include women and to listen to their opinions and to. And I found that women actually use English different than men. Absolutely. I think, is it, is it a different register? Kind of like, you know, very, is it kind of like, you know, aspects like hedging and, you know, like effective kind of register? Is that how, what was your, uh, like, how, how is it different to men? Mm. Like, yeah, I, I, I found that uh, women uh, would use, uh, Saudi English more than men. When men to, uh, tend to use standard English, why? Because they have more opportunity to go out and practice English and mm. master its rules. But mm. women have very limited opportunities, mm. so they uh, d uh, d uh, dry or rely on their own linguistic system, which is based mm. in Arabic, to use English. Mm. 
Oh, I think then it it's ha- the same. Yeah. Sorry, and it's the same in difference in other. Uh, I read that it's the same in different prices. Even in English, here in in England, women tend to use non-standard varieties more than men. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that you also have like a feminist strain going on in your study? Is is there any? Mm-hmm. No, I, I okay. think in general, every, okay. every woman is a feminist, but no, I didn't yeah. okay. Uh, okay. Uh, look at it from this uh, right. uh, point of view. Right, okay. That's, that's very interesting. Um, and by the way, the, the drawing that I see behind you, right behind you, is see one of your drawings? Uh, no, uh, the, uh, this is no, the, uh, from that, my, yeah. That yeah, one. this is me. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make it. No, it oh, okay. was a gift from a friend. Okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is from a local uh, artist here in Manchester. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm a, like, um, in conclusion, like to to wrap up what we've been talking about. Um, how do you think you you could probably um, I, I've seen you. I, I've seen your engagement on Twitter, and I've seen you how uh, you encouraging people to uh, to kind of take up different avenues. How do you think um, you will be able to extend that support system once you you know like once you get your PhD and you get an academic position? How do you think that support system could be extended? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, uh, um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, at first I was, uh, I think I was hesitant to talk about my problem. Mm-hmm. I, I, I felt ashamed, I don't know why. Yeah, but uh, no, I chose to, uh, I think this is how I could help uh, other Absolutely. students uh, or people in academia in general. When I talk about my problem and how I overcome them and how I, I, I didn't feel ashamed to ask for help and to say, hey, uh, look, I need uh, I need help in this area. I can't. Uh, sometimes I can't understand. Sometimes sometimes I have a brain fog. It's it's. I have invisible disabilities. I uh, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely. So when I, I think when I put it uh, in a social uh, in, in on Twitter uh, in in public when I talk about it, I encourage other people. I hope that I encourage other absolutely. people. Absolutely, absolutely. To, to seek help. That's a, that's a wonderful that's a wonderful thing that you do, Amma and. Um, your research and your other engagements are so inspiring um, that I'm, I'm sure a lot of people um, are feel very welcoming, um, you know, in your presence. Um, is there any anything else that you want to add? Like, you know, any any anything that I couldn't ask you? Like anything that you wanted to say but I couldn't tell um, ask you? Is there anything that you want to say? Mm. Uh, 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 it's an advice for ed for a PhD students. Oh, uh, that's great. I, I think yeah. I think you, you should. It is difficult to do a PhD. It is hard, but don't stop. Don't mm. don't give up. When you when you try a way and it doesn't work, look for another way. There is always another way. Look for another way and make it work. And don't give up on your dreams. If your dreams didn't come true, just create another dream. Um, and always put yourself first. Put your, put your health first. This is what I didn't do before. I, I wish I did. Um, but I'm learning. Yes, put myself first. Put yourself first. Always ask for help. Uh, always communicate with your supervisor. Always talk to your friends and your family. You will get through it. Absolutely. And here we are, just kind of like a couple of steps, you know, into submitting your thesis. And I'm really happy for you. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Amal. It's been a real honor, like having you here to talk. And thank you for trusting me because I wanted to bring this uh, kind of story, um, especially to people probably in Sri Lanka and other parts of the world, uh, to rethink about the decisions that they're going to make. Um, you know, um, as women, as as people having, you know, including me, mental health issues, uh, physical health issues, and other emotional kind of um, um, 
effects that they have just because they are in the academia and the pressure, the burnout that they have to yeah. undergo. So um, I'm, I'm very grateful that I could talk to you and to have this opportunity. And I wish we could see your full-fledged version of your research like, like very soon. Uh, and uh, that you will build on that and we will be able to see um, because you said there's very limited scholarship on Saudi English and I think this would be really a great uh, kind of contribution and uh, thank you Amal for being thank you, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for being a nice guest and wonderful guest um, and uh, um, so if you if you if you need anything if you need any assistance or any just time to talk you can always, you know, have this conversation Thank again. You. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank no you for allowing me to speak and to be part no, no, of your no. great podcast. Thank you so much. No, no, it's it's actually like it's because of you, like people like you, that um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to, you know, keep this going. And I'm going through like you know burnout as well, and it's it's really kind of like sometimes difficult to focus on things that are more important like this. Um, and um, I'm, I'm really happy that I got to talk to you. Thank you, Alma. Thank you. <laughs>